FSK or Main Street Capital? Which is the best today? I'm going to put these two head to head and give you my thoughts about which ones you might want to invest in of these two and some of the challenges and opportunities for each one. Let me know down in the comments below whether or not you're invested in these and which you're most interested in. Don't forget to hit subscribe to learn more about dividend investing over time with me today. Alright, first let us look at the history. So I'm going to start with Main Street Capital, which is by far one of my favourite business development companies. It has a strong focus on uh, equity investments, and that's really driven this actual growth here um, in share price, as well as an underlying growth in the net asset value, um, or, or the actual value of their investments that they have as a company over time. And that is good. As you can see as well with the white line, it's a bit hard to see there, uh, the uh, dividends have been growing as well over time. Now this is what I like to see with most companies, but it's quite uncommon to see this with a BDC. And, and Main Street Capital is pretty much uh, unique or, or quite distinct in this case because it does grow as a company over time in this way. Now, what does FSKKR Capital or FSK look like? Well we can see a very different picture, in fact almost the exact opposite. It doesn't have such a long history um, as a publicly listed company here, uh, but it's on a downward trajectory. Now that by itself is, is a big contrast. However, there's a couple of things to note here. You'll see that after the, the pandemic, there's been a bit of a recovery here uh, since about 2020. Um, and prices have sort of trended sideways, so they haven't been declining uh, so much as well. It's also important to note that there was a change of ownership right around uh, 2018. So you can see the slide in value here, and there was a slide in book value and net asset value at the same time, uh, and that was more or less halted or arrested or paused at this point here, uh, and then the new management has been much more successful in managing uh, both underwriting, uh, taking on better risk for the investments, uh, and also generally doing a good job of managing and writing this ship. So as a result, we've sort of seen a much more stable, a much more reasonable pattern here of prices since that takeover. So what does this look like in terms of future returns? Well, if we look at Main Street Capital, we take a normal multiple and the normal historic uh, price to earnings ratio of about 16.35. We project out to the end of 2024, and we assume that prices uh, increase to this regular normal historical price to earnings ratio, and we assume that analysts have it accurate. We'll note here that there's only a handful of analysts uh, providing a projection out this far, um, but we're looking at a, a total rate of return of 63% or about 28%. Now, if we look down here, at the uh, end of 2023. The big secret here has been the change in earnings from about six months ago through to the estimated uh, earnings per share um, more recently provided. And you can see that's quite a big jump. And that's largely down to the shift uh, in the Fed, to the shift in the income that they expect to earn from their portfolio of loans uh, provided to other companies. As the floating rates increase, uh, that increases the earnings for Main Street Capital, and that's reflected here as well uh, with fairly strong uh, gains here. Now, if we flip this over to FSK, we can see again quite a different picture. We can see that the earnings are relatively flat. We can also begin to see that the earnings had the same bump here, uh, the same anticipated bump from the floating rates increasing. But overall, the actual earnings, 287 for 2022, 289 for 2023, and only 284, the very slight decline here for 2024. Now, as we then consider this with a projection, we can see that the historic price to earnings ratio has only been 7.5, so much substantially lower than Main Street Capital. If prices return to this ratio and the analysts get their earning estimate correct, then we're looking at a total rate of return of 37%, or an annualised rate of return here of about 18%, so substantially lower.
which of these companies is going to be more stable? Well, Main Street Capital does have a relatively strong Standard & Poor's credit rating of a BBB minus. FSK does not have the same S&P credit rating. Now, if we look at the, the long-term debt to capital ratio, FSK has 56, Main Street Capital has 46. So I would say edging out Main Street Capital is in a better uh, situation right now. It's uh, got a credit rating from S&P. It's got a slightly better LT debt, long-term debt to capital ratio. But it's also important to note that Main Street Capital only has a relatively small dividend yield here of just under 7%. Now that is in contrast to FSK's strong 12.7% dividend yield. So there's quite a big difference there. If you're looking for current income, FSK is certainly the way to go. If you're looking for long-term gains, Main Street Capital has a reasonable income that's still market beating, but also the opportunity, I think, for long-term growth. Now, a couple of other key points as well. Main Street is internally managed. Now, that means that the, the company itself has the management team embedded within the company, so there's no additional fees for the management of these investments. On the other hand, FSK is externally managed. Now, as I said, that was taken over several years ago, um, and those management fees had been waived or, or reduced, eliminated for a short while, but they're going to come in full force uh, this coming quarter in quarter one 2023 um, and that is going to take a, a sledgehammer actually to um, the the income that would otherwise be distributed to the shareholders that the, the shareholders have seen in recent years um, and and it is going to probably sort of take a sledgehammer particularly to any supplemental dividends that the company is going to pay um, although they should be able to maintain a reasonably high dividend otherwise now, as I said, uh, Main Street Capital has a very strong focus on equity investments, um, and that is, has been a big driver of this long-term growth. FSK very, very much focuses on debt. Um, now, what that does mean is, is Main Street Capital, with their equity focus, uh, is, is very much more exposed to general macroeconomic cycles, so during an economic downturn, the equity value of Main Street's holdings will decline quite rapidly, much more so than FSK's uh, loan portfolio, which is primarily a first lien or, or number one must be repaid before anything else type of loans. Now another key distinction here is that Main Street has always had a very strong uh, underwriting focus. They've always been very risk averse, they've always made very safe long term loans. Now FSK, as we can see when we switch over, we had the large decline in prices and the underlying decline in the net asset value before the takeover. Now after the takeover the loans and underwriting process has been much tighter uh, and as a result the non-accruals has really leveled off on these new loans so the non-accruals are negligible now uh, on the new originations uh, and over time the, the non-accruals which are relatively high from the earlier period those are going to, to fall off um, and they're going to be left with these new originated loans post uh, merger and those are going to be driving a much better non accrual level uh, for FSK moving forward and, and I think that's important to note as well so the quality of their loan portfolio is going up over time as the older less safe loans are eliminated and, and fall off. Turning to the earnings call from early November we're looking here at Main Street the third quarter had strong uh, distributable net investment income. Uh, their distributable net investment income exceeded the regular dis monthly dividends by 36%. So if you're thinking about that, it's got a very strong buffer here at Main Street Capital uh, with much higher distributable income from their investments than they're actually paying out in dividends, providing quite a bit of security. Supplemental dividends. So again, that, that focus on a very strong DNII per share. Um, and so we're, we're looking at, I think, um, 
DNI I per share for the third quarter still exceeded total dividends paid by over 13 cents per share. And here as well, recommending that there's a declaration of future supplemental dividends um, to the extent that the distributable net investment income exceeds those dividends. So certainly a, a long-term focus on returning the, the benefits uh, from their investment portfolio to the shareholders. Now if we turn to FSK, we'll see a similar type of pattern emerging. So again, in the November earnings call, FSK is well positioned to continue to benefit from the increase in the interest rates as most of those loans um, are on the floating rate. And so ultimately, they're, they're basically saying this can still substantially increase the net investment income uh, by a reasonable amount, equating to uh, about six uh, cents per share per quarter for a 100 basis point move. So I think we've got some some sizable gains there. Now, of course, if the interest rates uh, decline and the Fed um, reduces the the rates, then that will decrease uh, over time the FSK income, and that will decrease over time the dividends that they do pay out. So there is some risk there. FSK or Main Street Capital, which is right for you? Well, FSK does have strong dividend yields at present, but Main Street Capital has a long history of raising their dividend and managing their equity portfolio for long-term growth. This is over to you guys. Let me know below which one you prefer for your investments today.